is the deck idea that I've been talking around with. This is Gargarine Deep Space. Uh, <clears throat> playing a bunch of tech cards, passive tech cards in the form of Data Raven and Snare that capitalizes on runners' mistakes to either create scoring windows or just kill them off completely. Um, there are no sea sources in this deck. It's just straight out three ravens, three snares. If you hit any one of them, you better clear the tags, otherwise you're doomed. Um, I have the Artis and Scorch Love to punish the runner. And the most important card is not actually shown here. It's actually an agenda. It's False Lead. Now, False Lead is so oppressive because um, assuming that the runner only has four clicks, i.e. they have no click increasing means, and they have no way to clear tech, multiple text at once. Um, they have no way to... Uh, once false need is scored, if they take two tags at any point in time, they're dead. So a double stack raven server becomes impenetrable. Um, yeah, basically they are forced to run only on their first and third clicks. Otherwise, if they run on the second click, they'll get false leaded, and I will just scorch them away. So that's the power of this deck. We are up against Wizard, and this is going to be a hell of a matchup for me because I rely a lot on asset economy. And even though Gargarin's ability still applies along with Pay1 implementation, it's going to be so easy for him to challenge my asset economy, and that will be the right thing to do. So here what I do is to bait, you know, test the water, bait him out a bit, install the Jackson, and play the Pay1 implementation. Now, of course, he runs it. He trashes it for free, but not before paying one credit himself for the Gargarin tax and giving me one credit from pay one implementation. Now the best thing about this is that because of the search of economy he gave me, combined with the fact that he took a tempo hit, I'm able to install install advance the atlas that was sitting in my opening hand. And this is pretty huge. I want to make sure that he has no chance of scoring this atlas. Well he could if he has a yog in hand, he could run that server, install yog and then steal the atlas. But he's not interested in that, he just wants to hammer my RD. Of course I can't rest the Raven on it because that will uh, bring me down to a credit level too low to protect my Atlas. So now I am able to score my Atlas, I can now rest my Raven and force him to stay out. Now he runs HQ, it's a builder on HQ, no point raising it, and because of the paywall money, I'm able to trigger Snare. And that should really uh, instill some fear in him. He has to be worried about Snare all across the board now, and this I can leverage to my advantage. One of the best things you can do with Gagarin Deep Space is install naked atlases and false leads. The runner, if they're in a poor position, they generally will not run it, and that's pretty huge. Now here I find a false lead, so it immediately hits the table. We'll see if he runs that server. He's not interested. Instead, he goes for Data Raven, which is a very good choice. Parasite is the ultimate counter to Data Raven. It takes a while to queue through it, but once he does, I need to find new protection for R&D. And as such, I play the Caduceus on R&D because I know he has the potential to take out a data sucker, run archives three times, and kill my raven. So now that I've done playing my hedge fund, I have enough money, I can now score the force speed, and this more or less wins me the game. There is very little, unless the runner knows my deck inside out, it is very easy to capitalize on a runner's mistake because anytime they run, they run into the risk of false lead firing off and that could easily end their game if they're not prepared to deal with consequences, i.e. if he doesn't run class greed, which I don't think he does. Probably only has iPad boots. So even though he's denying my assets, I still have pretty good money because pay one implementation has paid off so much. His few R&D runs early on has really allowed me to gain enough money to establish a stable board state and score a few agendas, and that's pretty key. Um, I also have an Atlas token, which is invaluable here. Tutor the second Scorch, Tutor a Snare when he runs HQ, etc. There are so many things you can do with the Atlas token, it's unbelievable. Alright, here he plays I've Had Worse and triggers, I mean, Net Ready Ice to trigger his I've Had Worse. Always nice to see him spending his own I've Had Worse, which means that it's going to be easier to Scorch him. So, but that means now he has Net Ready Ice, things could get difficult for me because most of my eyes will be porous to him. So I need to quickly work my way up and seal this game before he gets his entire rig set up because once he has Mimic, York Corroder with Net Ready Eyes, there's very little I can do. Here I install the pet campaign naked, probably not a good idea, but with Paywall out, it doesn't hurt that much. He's still generating me money 
passive income, which I appreciate, but I would really much rather have that pet campaign instead. Um, all right, he installs a corroder, and notice that even though there are programs in his heap like Yorg, Parasite, he's not actually using his clone chips, he's saving the clone chips up for something, um, which will hurt me in the end. But for now, I install two new remotes, forcing him to run all of them, and of course he will start spending his money to trash them. I'll let him trash my EBC, he can trash my DRT, it's going to cost him money and it's gaining me money, so that's great. It's like I'm clicking for credits while slowing down his tempo. Except that I'm not really slowing down his tempo at all. He has 15 credits on that KD Jones. What I'm really searching for right now is a Data Raven. With a Data Raven, I can start scoring agendas um, in a remote. Because if he runs the remote and it turns out to be a snare, he'll take two tags and will flatline to my double scotch stuff. That's what I'm looking for. In retrospect, maybe I should have used my Atlas token to fetch a Data Raven. Um, now that he's completely set up with his three breakers, I can expect big R&D digs and vamp to come very soon. The fact that he's running so much money can only mean that he probably has vamp somewhere and I need to be prepared for that. So I have Meru Martin to build her on HQ, it's not the best, but I don't really have much choice at this point. There's not much in the way of data ravens for me. Um, one is in the bin and there are two more in my stack. <sighs> haven't found any of them yet. I'm very reliant on the data ravens to protect my remotes from scoring and this is where I draw into a very undesirable card, government takeover. This is not a good card to keep. I'm tossing it in the bin and hoping, praying, crossing my fingers he doesn't run archives. Six points. No punitive counter strikes in my deck. Uh, and I'm too poor to trigger punitive anyway. Um, the reason why I run government takeover is to elevate the gender density. I want a lower gender density so that paywall will be very effective. I have to run Atlas and False Lead because they are just too good to not run, and NAPDs are hard to steal. So the last agenda that the next best agenda after all those would be government takeover to pad out the agenda requirement. I definitely have no plans of scoring it, and I can only hope that the runner doesn't steal it. That is my game plan. Now he installs a medium and begins running R and D, and he should feel pretty good about it um, with his breaker suite. He can plow through any strength 4 or lower ice, and medium will allow him to see multiple cards. So this is why I have to rest the Taurus, which is at strength 5. Taurus is pretty useless because I know he has a David in his heap, but the big benefit is that he, haven't, he hasn't found his console yet, which means that if he wants to bring out the David to beat the Taurus Trace, he has to sack one of his current programs, which I know he doesn't want to. So I'm going to let him... Uh, fire off the trace and here I decide not to boost the trace very surprisingly. This is because when I see his hardware I realize there's not much that I really want to trash. Clone chips, they are nice to trash but am I really gonna pay 3 credits to trash a clone chip? Probably not. Um, and he's pretty rich so he will beat the trace no matter what. I can only trash one hardware max, no point trashing the uh, net ready ice because I don't run that many strength for ice. So he does beat the trace, and I think he jacks out after that. Um, yes, I draw into more economy in the form of the root. I'm installing that and gaining a credit. I'm still digging for my data raven. It hasn't shown up yet. I really should be spending that Atlas token. But I want to save it in case he runs my hand so I can tutor a snare, increase the chance of him flatlining outright. So here I find my Atlas. I immediately install it. Hopefully he doesn't run it. He seems pretty focused on R&D. Hopefully I can... That deviates... Uh, uh, deflects the attention of my remotes. If I can sneak this, this atlas out, I'll be looking pretty good because that puts me at match point, forcing him to run every remote from then on, including any snares I put down. Alright, so I'm just shaking behind my uh, computer monitor right now. If he runs the atlas, my paywall that has been on the board for so long will finally be gone. It has served me so well, but I would really like to score this atlas. He does counter my Taurus with a Parasite. Now that he has Grimoire out, he has space for that, and the Taurus will disappear soon. So I rest the Caduceus with the Root, forcing him to pay 2 per run, but he does start to accumulate medium tokens. I'm hoping he hits a snare at this point. If he hits a snare, he dies. That didn't happen. Instead, he lives to see another day, trashes my second Jackson Howard, and runs the Root to trash it. Again, wise choice. 
my only consolation prize is that he's giving me one credit every time he's making a run. And because he spent his money to make the, to trash the route, he doesn't have recurring credits left to trash whatever this remote is. That's why he didn't run it. So I take advantage of that to score the Atlas. Putting me at 5 points to 0 points, but don't be fooled. Even though I have the agenda point lead, I'm in very bad shape because he has a stack medium and he can chew through all my ice. So this, even though it looks like I'm winning, in actual fact, I don't see myself winning. The only uh, point, of, the only consolation point right here is that he probably won't win off the top of R&D simply because government takeover is in archives. Because he is, uh, because I know exactly where my agendas are, I actually feel rather safe with his medium digs. In fact, I want him to make medium digs because that will allow that will open up the opportunity uh, opportunity for him to hit my snares and snare is basically the only way I can win now because I know that he if I install Atlas Naked he will run it he will get through the server he will steal it so here as you saw I use my final Atlas counter to tutor Jackson Howard because I do not want him to trash my final Jackson Howard once that is trash um, yeah that deactivates all the snares in archives and that is bad so what I wanted to do here was to reshuffle snares two snares and the Jackson Howard back to my R&D and here I'm just speeding up the video because there's not much uh, mention. He's just going to dig R&D every turn. I purge medium virus counters because I know that he is very intent on digging R&D and could win off the top of that. He goes up to 4 points. Um, I throw a false lead and he does score 5 points. On his final R&D run, he does not find an agenda. Instead, he hits a snare on his second click. I sack false lead. He has a tag. He scorched and dies. I conclude my deck is bad. Huh? Why? Well, you see, um, I was pretty much locked out that game. Um, if your game win condition comes down to the runner randomly accessing a snare from R&D, you know that your chances are good. And that was exactly the case there because his icebreakers were just too good for me. But I guess that can be said for not just my ice suite, but for most ice suites in general nowadays. The standard ice suite, I mean, standard ice no longer cuts it. Runners are way too rich, breakers too efficient for traditional ice. This is why people are turning towards upgrades like Caprice, Ash, or other tactics like flatlining in order to win. Because ice doesn't, just doesn't cut it anymore. And that is a very important shift as the Sensen cycle progresses. Um, as such, Data Raven is the star of the show for my deck simply because it is one of the few ice that most runners are not prepared for. Sure, there are counters like Parasite and Fan Patel, but they are very expensive to play or take very long to uh, come into effect, which hopefully buys me time to score my agendas. Um, Snare is a pretty good tech in my deck as well for the deep digging decks of today. There is not much that can counter an R&D interface or two or three stacked together. Snare is one of those few things that does exactly that. Um, it is a very common thing to play either medium or R&D ice in good runner decks nowadays and this is a response to that. Other than that, this is quite a horrible deck for the most part. It is only good because um, it shines in the current meta. Um, yeah, In a meta that is more prepared for flatline, uh, flatlining runners, or ones that use keyhole a lot, this becomes much, much worse. Yes, keyhole is a definitely a big weakness for this deck. Now, um, the <clears throat> winning is not easy when your deck doesn't really have a late game win condition, and this deck doesn't. If you, if you notice, all my ice is small, 4 strength or less. Uh, the only real ice that I can have protecting my remote is a data raven. And of course, I didn't draw too many of them this game. That's why it was so hard for me to pump out the NAPDs that were clogging my hand. But back to that, my only way to win late game is to ensure that I had a good early game by scoring agendas because my agendas in this deck are so powerful. Overscore Atlas is fantastic. False lead is a game changer. And that's the entire reason why I was able to win this game. If I can uh, get a hit start on the runner early game, 
I give myself a chance late game, and that's exactly what happened here when my opponent tripped out and made that crucial mistake. Second click run. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Happy net running. See you around.